Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the Rear Limit Limiter plugin in Reaper. I have a project in front of me here, and I want to render the final output to a file. But first, I want to check the level. And we could do that by going up here to the View menu and choosing Master Track. Then we go to the effects on this track, and we're going to add a metering plugin to the end of this chain. I already have a compressor on there, and we'll put it after it. Double click over here. Let's search loudness. And right over here, we'll find the loudness meter. Double click it, make sure it's after the compressor. And we can see our levels for the final output on this meter. Don't make me dance to the tune that you're humming. No, and we can see it's going over right here. We have some samples clipped down here. But we could also see our Luff's level, which is the perceived loudness of our mix. And it's about minus 10.5. But to reduce our clipping, we could add a volume plugin after our compressor and before our meter. Let's choose this one, put it before the meter, and bring it down a few dB. And now, don't make me we don't see any clipping, but our mix is a bit lower. So it's perceived at a lower level. So if we don't want that, another solution is to add a limiter. So let's delete a volume plugin, and instead, let's go to the Reaper plugins and choose Relimit or Relimit. Double click it. We'll put it before our meter. Now we can compress or limit our signal to make it louder and also eliminate any overs. And we can see up here are rectified peaks that are being reduced by the limiter. This limiter is considered a brick wall limiter, which is basically a compressor with a high ratio with a hard ceiling. Once the signal reaches our threshold, it won't go any higher. So it's used in this situation to prevent digital overs. And right over here, this red line represents our threshold. And we can adjust it over here, and here is our ceiling. Now, if we just play it now, because we already have some overs, it's still going to reduce those peaks. Let's see. Don't make me dance to Notice right here in the rectified window, it's cutting off these peaks. And we can see it here as well. The little white that shows up, those are peaks that are being reduced with the limiter. And we can see that. If we go back to our meter, right here. Don't make me Notice it never goes above zero, and there's no samples that are clipping. And the Luff's level is about the same. It's not louder or quieter. Now, if we wanted no limiting, we could still reduce it by bringing the slider up instead of down. So we'll go a few dB this way, and it's not going to limit our peaks. Right here, but it's still not going to clip. But you can see the Luff's level is lower, so it's not going to be as loud as before. But if we want a louder mix, just bring down our threshold. Now we can see a lot more peaks being reduced in here and also over here. But it still sounds pretty good. Not too crushed, because its limiter is very transparent. And to hear more clearly what it's doing, let's put this back to the default and choose the option down here, link, which is going to link the threshold and the ceiling keeping the volume the same. So we won't be tricked by thinking it's better just because it's louder. Don't make me dance to the tune that 
And then when you hear it starts to sound crushed, you can bring it back up a bit. Don't make me dance to the tune that you're humming. No, my body don't move like that. Then afterwards, we could unlink the parameters and put this back to its brick wall ceiling. So now it should be much louder. Don't make me dance to the tune that you're humming. No. And we could see that over here. Don't make me dance to the tune that you're humming. No, my body don't move like Our lofts that. level is a lot louder, about minus 8 dB, which in most situations is too loud. If we check this chart for Spotify, there's no point in going over minus 14 lofts, because they're just going to turn the volume of your track down. Or well, minus 16 for Apple, or minus 9 to 13 for Amazon, and so on. So unless you need a really loud mix, we probably want to pull back on the limiter. Don't make me dance to the tune that you're humming. No, my body don't move like that. Don't make me pretend I don't see a shark coming. Uh, you'll be running when I raise the black. Somewhere around there sounds pretty good to me. It cuts off our peaks. As we can see in here. Don't make me dance to the tune that you're humming. No, my body don't move like that. But it still sounds mostly the same. Now, if you prefer to use true peak metering, we can use this instead, which is intended to estimate the highest level the signal could reach after resampling at any sample rate. So it'll clamp down a bit more to make sure there's no possibilities of any overs. Don't make me dance to the tune that you're humming. No, my body don't move like that. Don't make me pretend I don't see a shark coming. Uh, you'll be running when I raise the black flag. Now, if we right click in the waveform, there's a few preferences we could choose. By default, a display is going to freeze when playback stops. So if we turn it off, it's going to keep scrolling. Don't make me dance to the tune. It keeps going no matter what. Or turn it on. Don't make me dance to the tune that you're humming. And it freezes when we hit stop, which is useful if we use our mouse to zoom in, go up or down. Or grab it to see each waveform so we can see exactly what the limiter is doing. In white is before and in black is after. And we could zoom in like this during playback. Don't make me dance to the tune that you're humming. No, my body don't move like that. Don't make me pretend I don't see a shark coming. Uh, you'll be running when I raise the black flag. Also, by default, it's going to clear the display when playback starts. If we don't want that, turn it off. Don't make me dance. And it just keeps adding to it each time. Don't make me, don't make me. But if we want to clear it each time, leave it on. Don't make me, don't make me dance. An auto scroll display is also on by default. So if we turn it off, don't make me dance to the tune that you're humming. It starts on the left and it doesn't auto scroll. It just goes from left to right during playback. But if you prefer it to start over here and scroll during playback, that's on by default. And you can turn it off right here. I kind of like this option. Then down over here, we have the release adjustment. And by default, this limiter is program dependent with an auto release. But you can still adjust it here. And if you hear a difference, definitely play around with this control. Although I usually don't and usually leave it at the default. 
And then finally, we could choose our performance. High quality by default is going to sound the best, but it does come at a cost. If we go over here, we can see the latency that's being added to the signal, which is going to affect if you're recording with this plugin on. You'll hear a delay in your speakers or headphones. So if you want this on during recording, you could switch this to low latency, which isn't going to sound quite as good, but it reduces the latency by a bit. We could also just turn the plugin off during recording, which eliminates the latency completely, and turn it back on afterwards. So again, we could turn it down up here or bring it up to reduce our peaks to make our mix as loud as we need. And always check it with our meter to make sure the levels or the perceived loudness is what you want. And also make sure there's no clipping, which there shouldn't be as long as we're using the limiter. So that's pretty much it. That's the rear limit limiter plugin in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.